So good evening and welcome to the uh, 14th meeting of the 13th elected uh, Town Council of Happy Valley Goose Bay. Just prior to the, uh, the live stream starting, we uh, made uh, two check presentations, uh, one to the Melville Public Library as our annual contribution and the other to Ground Search and Rescue. And just like to thank those two groups for the work that they do in, uh, in town. Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll start our meeting this evening. I'll ask for uh, a motion to adopt the agenda. Moved by Councillor Brumfield, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Um, any discussion? Is the agenda good? Okay, ask for a vote. All those in favor, indicate what aye. 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 Contrary minded? Okay, motion is passed. We've adopted our agenda. I don't believe there's any delegations. All right, I would like to note for the minutes and the, uh, and the viewers that um, Deputy Mayor Ella Wallace is joining us by phone this evening and uh, she'll participate uh, through, uh, through teleconference. All right, no delegations. We'll move into uh, the adoption of the previous minutes. So we've had the minutes for several days, of course. So I'll ask for a motion to adopt the, uh, the minutes from the 13th uh, council meeting. Moved by Councillor Brumfield again, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Any discussion? There's omissions noted. Okay, uh, hearing none, I'll ask for a vote. Uh, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Country minded. <laughs> Uh, okay, we've adopted the minutes. Motion passed. Uh, correspondence. So, uh, the only thing I see there is a request from the Labrador North uh, Chamber of Commerce, or sorry, a letter to us, uh, acknowledge the work that the Labrador North Chamber of Commerce does to promote and represent our region. So, I'm uh, also pleased to say that we have agreed to contribute uh, to them an amount of $1,500 from the town's regional marketing budget uh, towards the production of a promotional video for our community and area. And I guess the uh, intent is to work with the chamber to attract businesses and skilled professionals to our, uh, to our region. So we look forward to the final, the final uh, I guess, production of that. I don't see any other correspondence. And with this, no, good. All right, so we'll move into our committee meetings this evening and community, committee reports. And I'll start with uh, the Deputy Mayor with Community Planning and Development. Great, thank you, uh, Mayor Andrews. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yep, wonderful. Uh, wonderful. The CPD committee met on Wednesday, April 13th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. In attendance were Councillor Pamela Duffett, Councillor Hayward Broomfield, Mayor George Andrews, CAO Nadine McCauley, Engineer Tech Mark Urquhart and Engineer um, E.A. Paul Zell, Public Relations Waylon Williams and myself. The meeting was called to order at 4.28 p.m. Recruitment process is ongoing for the community development and research position. The work towards hiring this position is still in progress. Engineer Tech Mark Urquhart presented a new version of the monthly permit application. There was also discussion of other applications as they relate to the property and business tax, as well as town business registration. The format will be added onto the town's website. Also discussed at the meeting was the proposal to put forward an application for the SCM um, asset management application. All committee members were in uh, complete agreement with the importance of such an application and agreed to put it forward. We have one Crown land application and one discretionary land use application. The meeting was adjourned at 6.02 p.m. and the next CPD meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, May 11th at 4.30 p.m. Please accept this as having the Community Planning and Development Report being made. Okay, thank you. So the report has been presented by Deputy Mayor Wallace, uh, seconder, seconded by Councillor Bennett, uh, discussion. So, all those in favor of the CPD planning and development uh, report for this month, uh, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Okay, we've passed that. Uh, okay, recommendations from your uh, committee, Deputy Mayor. All right, thank you. The first uh, community planning and development recommendation is A159496, Stephanie Almond, 20 Park Drive. 
the CPD committee recommends council have no objection to the Crown Land application 159496 with the following conditions. Compliance with all the town's development regulations and no development structures are allowed in the easement, but the easement can be used for other backyard activities. Okay, so it's been moved by Deputy Mayor Wallace uh, for application 159, uh, sorry, 159496 by Stephanie Allman at 20 Park Drive. Seconder? Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Contrary minded? Okay, motion passed. Next recommendation, please. Thank you. Home based business, Alley Wells at 16D Lethbridge Street. The CPD committee recommends council approve the application from Alley Wells for a home based business located at 16D Lethbridge Street with the following conditions. A fire and life safety inspection as per NFPA 101 be satisfactorily completed at the applicant's cost. The applicant provides an ap application for a business registration change of use at the applicant's cost. Compliance with all the town's development regulations with a special reference to section 6.0 accessory use, 6.3 home business and a residential land use class. And the application obtains all required approvals from service NL or any government agencies <coughs> having jurisdiction. Okay, moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace that we accept a um, home-based business at 16D Lethbridge Street. Uh, seconder, please. Seconded by Councillor Duffin. Uh, discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Motion is passed. Uh, next item, please. Thank you. Final one, Municipal Asset Management Plan. The CPD Committee recommends Council submit an application under the FCM Municipal Asset Management Program. Okay, moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Wallace that uh, we engage in an application or enter into an application process under the FCM's Municipal Asset Management Plan for our town to develop an asset management program. Seconded by Councillor Winters. Uh, discussion. And uh, just, I, I'd just like to note here that um, this is a program where a majority of the funding for that, uh, for that process of de designing a mass asset management plan uh, comes under the FCM uh, program. So uh, we could get a considerable amount of work done uh, for relatively zero, um, ne almost negative cost to the towns. Anybody else? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay, passed. Uh, that's it for you, Deputy Mayor? It certainly is. Thank you. Okay. All right. We will move on to, um, uh, yeah, Community Services and Recreation. And Councillor Winters, floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the, April, uh, the meeting was held on April 12th, 2022. In attendance was the CSR Committee Chair, Councillor Winters, Deputy Mayor Wallace, Mayor Andrews as ex officio, and uh, Councilor Duffett, CEO Nadine McCauley, Engineer Randy Dillon, PR and Special Events Manager William Williams, Program Coordinator Ann Morris, and Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy. There was also one delegation, Arlene Michelin Pittman, who gave a presentation to the OLQP alumni recognition on the 50th anniversary of the school and their plan of events for the summer. After the delegation presentation, the CSR committee meeting was called to order at 4.53. There were several uh, items on discussion. Um, basically, there was a review. I'm going to take a break. Yep. Sorry. Okay. Yep. All right. So we'll just, uh, we want to, uh, you want to go on to the next, do you want to finish? It's okay with you if she finishes? Yeah. Okay. So, Councillor Duffett, who sits on that committee, will, uh, just uh, to begin. Um, after the delegation presentation, the CSR committee meeting was called to order at 4.53. There was a re review of previous minutes and action items, and there were no errors or omission. Um, new business and discussion items. Um, some things that came up were the Labrador Training Center, as there was a report provided about the building. Um, Cruise NL. There were no cruise ships planned for the season, but will be a task for um, 
the upcoming CSR position for next season. We'll have plans on that. Um, a new helmet policy that was discussed. Um, we will be provided a sample policy for the committee to review and discuss for the May CSR meeting. The active NL fund application was submitted and approved to be used for uh, purchasing equipment and we are hoping to get some picnic tables, more picnic tables at Kinsman Park. Also discussed was the town summer rec program and how it may conflict um, with other programs. So we do have a meeting that will be discussed, another, an extra, another meeting that will discuss that. Um, the manager's report was provided by the acting director updating the committee on CSR activities for the month of March. The next meeting is scheduled for May 9th, 2022 at 4.30 p.m. and the meeting was adjourned at 6.54 p.m. Please um, accept this report as being presented for the CSR committee. Okay, uh, thank you, Councillor Duffet, for, uh, for uh, finishing the report. So it has been moved by Councillor Duffet uh, to accept the CSR uh, committee, uh, community, community Service and Recreation Committee report for the month, uh, seconded by Councillor Brumfield. Uh, discussion. Shall I leave for that? Oh, we're going to do that in a minute. We've got one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Should we wait on the motion? Yes, I'm going to. Yeah. Um, Perhaps we could go to we'll the go to second this one. one. We'll come back. Yeah. Um, okay, so all those in favor, indicate with aye. Uh, aye. Contra minded? Okay. Um, there are some uh, recommendations um, from that committee. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, do we want to go on to the next committee and come back to this one? Well, let's do the second one. Okay, do the second one? Okay, all right. All right, so um, we're going to do the recommendations from the committee and I'll ask uh, Councillor Duffett to start with number two. Um, Councillor Bennett? Oh. That, yeah. Sure. <laughs> sure. So just, just that the, uh, the motion uh, deals with um, an issue in which uh, Councillor, uh, both Councillor Winters and Councillor Bennett uh, have been declared in conflict. So Councillor Brumfield, or sorry, Councillor Winters has already left the uh, chambers and now Councillor uh, uh, Bennett is also out of the chambers. Okay, all right, Councillor Duffett, go ahead with your recommendation, please. Thank you. The Community Service and Recreation Committee recommends that Council approve a change of a piece of equipment to be installed, namely a barrel spinner, um, with a double ridge rock climber from the list that was originally approved. The complete list of playground equipment that will now be approved for installation to the limit of funds available is two bay arch swings, three picnic tables, a space pod dome climber, a space station, a double ridge rock climber, toddler play structure, small child play structure, older child play structure, and silo scramble climber. Okay. Um been moved by uh, Councillor Duffett to uh, make a, an amendment to the equipment that was already pre was already approved by Council, and she's listed the nine items uh, of pieces of equipment that will be uh, that uh, will be uh, on on site, and uh, are limited to the funds that are available to date. Uh, seconded by Councillor Rumbold. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. Uh, aye. Contrary minded. All right. Can we ask the two gentlemen to come back in, please? Councilor Winters? Yep. Okay, so there's one additional recommendation from the uh, CSR uh, committee, and I'll ask uh, Councillor uh, Winters if he will uh, bring that to the floor. Yep, the uh, recommendation is the appointment of the Director of Community Services and Recreation. The Community Services and Recreation Committee is pleased to recommend that Council appoint Travis Ford as the Director of Community Service and Recreation with the Town of Haddon Valley Goose Bay. Okay, it's been moved that we now, the council appoint uh, Travis Ford as the new director of community services and recreation with the town, seconded by, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Any discussion? Well, I am absolutely elated that this has uh, come uh, across our table this evening. 
Uh, I want to uh, just quickly say to staff, uh, thanks for the work in that process. And uh, I think that we're on uh, good footing. And uh, this is a good, good news appointment for, uh, for us. And it uh, continues to check off some of the uh, appointments that are necessary. And we're making headway in that. So. Excellent. Thing. I Absolutely. think uh, Absolutely. Ann Morris and Randy Dillon for doing the in well while we had no yep. director. That was must have been difficult over the last year and a half to two years to do that. So thank you guys. Absolutely. Anybody else? We're good. Okay. All so good. Uh, that being said, I guess uh, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome Mr. Ford to. Uh, to his new position and look forward to uh, good results. All right, so that's uh, community services and recreation uh, taken care of for this evening. I uh, now would like to pass the floor to uh, Councillor Brumfield with Finance, Admin, and Policy. Councillor Brumfield. Okay, good evening, all fellow councillors. The Finance Administration Policy met on April 19th, 2022, from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Present was myself and the chair, Councillor Hayward Brumfield. Also present with Councillor Bennett and Councillor Rumble, and Deputy or Mayor Andrews was there as ex officio. The staff there was CAO Nadine McCauley, DFO Mike Dalmont, and Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy. Regrets were from my SAT, Paulette Miles, and uh, our PR uh, man, Waylon Williams. <laughs> okay. We reviewed the previous minutes, and there was no <laughs> items there, no errors or omissions. Uh, we gave verbal updates on the audit and the HR issues, and hopefully those will be settling real soon, starting on working on them, getting them done. This past month, we had two business tax exemption requests, two donation requests for youth travel, a donation request from Ronald McDonald House, and a delegation of, and we also discussed a delegation of authority policy. Uh, Councilor Bennett left the, left the meeting at 12.50, so we had to discuss the renewal of the wastewater treatment plant loan, which is what we did, and we agreed to renew that one for five years. So after that, when then Councilor Rummel had to leave at 1 p.m., so we no longer had a quorum, so we basically had to cut this meeting short. But we, all the manager's reports are attached. We did not get a chance to discuss all of them, but. Hopefully we will get a chance, but those items we didn't discuss, we will discuss at the next meeting. So the meeting adjourned at like 1 p.m. and the next meeting is on May the 14th, I believe at 4.30. Sounds right. Yeah, good. And that's everything I had. And there is some recommendations that yep. we, we have as well. Yep. I'll do those in a second. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you, Councilor Brimford. Moved by Councilor Brimford, let <coughs> me accept the finance and in and policy committee for the month as, uh, as read. As seconded by Councilor Rumbold. Uh, discussion. Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded. All right, so recommendations from that committee. Okay, uh, the first recommendation is the request for business tax exemption from property ID 0795740001. The FAP committee recommends council approve granting an exemption of the business tax to the Labrador Friendship Center for 2022 in the amount of 5,706.84. Okay, it's been moved by Council Brumfield that we uh, extend a business tax exemption to the uh, Friendship Center uh, for 2022's tax amount. Uh, seconded by mm -hmm. Councillor Bennett. Discussion? No discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contraindicated. Aye. Motion is passed. Uh, next item, please. <coughs> okay, the next uh, recommendation is youth travel assistance. Big Land Barbell, the FAP committee recommends council defer the application from Big Land Barbell until a review of the youth travel assistance poly policy F0029 is complete. Okay, it's been moved uh, by uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield that the, uh, the request for, uh, or I guess the applications uh, from uh, Big Land Barbell, uh, use travel policy, be, uh, be deferred, 
point of view for uh, a review of that uh, policy. Seconded by Councillor Bennett. Discussion? Uh, can I mention something with this one in particular? Yes, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. With the Youth Travel Assistance Program, it, it involves quite a bit of work in the lead up to it. I mean, I, um, as it is now, I mean, you have to apply at least a month prior or prior to the meeting. You have to prepare a budget, some of which associations is quite a lengthy budget associated to the, the Youth Travel Fund. Uh, travel is typically ending the month of May when you look at a calendar year and for what people are applying for, whether it's schools, whether it's community associations. Pretty much everything for the entire year finishes in May. So we have this group in particular applying for youth travel assistance. Um, and probably there'll be nothing for June, July, August, September. And then you'll come October and there'll be a, a couple more. There'll be interest again in going forward. I just find it a shame that we're taking a, uh, a defer the application and reviewing this whole assistance policy with well, here we are with this group, and in May when um, you probably won't see any more up till October. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I'd just like to, uh, to make a comment that uh, the reason I think that uh, the committee looked at this approach was mainly due to the sheer amount. Uh, so our donation policy in, uh, in the community, uh, in the council right now, is I think sits at approximately $20,000. In the last three months, we have taken a majority of that budget and put it to travel uh, for uh, various uh, youth activities. So I think in, uh, in uh, I guess, just doing due diligence and trying to ensure that that donation budget that we have is, uh, you know, uh, as, as broad and, and, I guess, comprehensive as possible, uh, if we continued, we would have, you know, all of that money, I think, would have been done in four months. So in the last three meetings, we've given considerable amounts of money. So I think that's the reason why the committee discussed reviewing it to see if uh, things like, you know, do we do individuals, do we do groups, do we do, you know, a donation to a group, et cetera. So all that was done. And um, yeah, I think it's important because if we give all of the donation policy to say sports travel or to one other group or another, then, uh, you know, that's not being comprehensive. and. Uh, so I think that's the reason uh, that the committee decided to look at the option of uh, just assessing whether the policy was where we want it to be. Oh, I agree. I mean, I'm in complete agreement with this, uh, adjusting and, and looking in, and um, revamping that entire policy. I completely understand that. I just find the timing of it. Here we are in May. You've got a group there, a couple groups, of which we've already allocated funds to in the same uh, particular group. I think it's... Uh, Mealy Mountain basketball, and there being others, I mean, within the same organizations, and now we're saying no, when they don't have anything else coming up in June, July, August, September, October. Yeah, I just think the timing of it, if you, to look at it and revamp it, it should have taken, should have been doing this in uh, the beginning, the minute you, you realize you were giving such a chunk of money to one particular group. Yeah, I, and like I say, I mean, that's what came, but Cumulatively, over the last three months, we've given, you know, well over half of that budget, particular budget amount. I'm going to move the table to uh, Councillor. Give the move the uh, mic to Councillor Rumble. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to clarify for our viewers and for Council as well um, that it is definitely not a denial of an application. There has not been a no. Um, this has no, but they been leave. They go on a trip now. They're leaving uh, hey, um, in May. Sorry, sorry, Deputy Mayor. I'm just going to hold you and let her make her point. Please, Councilor Rumble. Uh, sorry, we made the decision to defer our um, decision on the application. So there could still be a yes um, once this is reviewed and when we decide. Um, I, I do feel, I, I understand the Deputy Mayor's point that it is unfortunate timing. I would hope that if a uh, donation was made, say, in the month of May or in the month of June even, um, that the groups in question would still, you know, be able to receive if, if we decided to give them a donation and they'd be able to put it towards um, whatever at that time. Councilor Duffett? Um, I'd also like to make the point, well, I understand there's a lot of groups finishing up their activities in the next month um but this isn't just for sports you know there's and 
for example, we have swimmers who will be swimming all summer. They won't be finishing in May. Um, there's a lot, it's a youth travel assistance. It's not a sport travel assistance. There's lots of youth who travel in the summer for things such as drama camps and French camps and other educational opportunities such as that. So it won't, it's not a matter of when the sports finish for this season. It's, there are other people who will avail of it through the summer. Yeah. And I think that's why uh, the decision to make sure that, you know, if we may just decide, or I guess the committee may decide to, and council so subsequently, may decide to continue where we're going. But at the end of the day, um, you know, to, to drain it uh, for one particular purpose, as Councillor uh, Duffett has just, you know, alluded, uh, might not be the best use of that, of those funds. Uh, anybody else want to comment? Just wondering the timeline of the review of the policy. Good question. What's that? What timeline? What's the timeline you have for uh, Hopefully we're going to start reviewing next week, hopefully. Okay. It will be, hopefully be, if not finished, be done by, mostly done by the next council meeting. Okay, so I'm that's, hoping. okay, so that's good. So, and again. Uh, no, and thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Rumble. There, just, uh, yes, if you, uh, you're right. It wasn't a flat out no, but it was that it's approved this particular one, Big Land Barbell, or whoever applies. It could still be applied to whatever a costs are incurred on their trips. I know it's not only sports. I, I'm well aware of what's gone on throughout possibly this summer for this, but I just thought it was really teetered one way January and February, and the, the, this group in particular who are applying now are completely without just by sheer dates. I mean, they leave in May. They're leaving next week. So Yeah, the unfortunate, just, the unfortunate thing I think is though is if we continue, there will be no help for anybody from this fund. So that's why I, I said I, I think... It's already gone. Oh, no, absolutely. And that's why, like I say, I mean, in terms of trying to make sure that it, it is comprehensive and that it doesn't go, I think that the review... And it may, I mean, the review may come back to say, okay, no, let's continue what we're doing. And then again, these particular entities would be, a, would be addressed in the next council meeting. So I think, uh, yeah, that they're not denied. They're just having to be deferred until we, until we just do a, a due diligence look at what we're, how we're spending that money. For sure. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So I guess we'll, uh, we'll vote on that one. Any further discussion? That's good. I'd like to ask a question. Do we have to vote on the deferred application or deferring? Um, yes. We do, yes. Deferral if, was. If motion is brought to the yeah. table, then yes, we yeah. have to vote on it. Yeah. 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 Thank you, uh, CAO, my colleague. All right, so all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra reminded? All right. No. <laughs> okay, do you want the record to indicate that you voted against? Exactly. Yes, please. Okay, can we have that, please? Uh, Okay, our next okay, so the next one, Councilor is almost the exact same thing again. There's another one for youth travel assistance, and this time it's from the Mealy Mountain Female Soccer. The FAP committee recommends cut to defer the application from Mealy Mountain Female Soccer until a review of the youth travel policy, assistance policy F0029 is complete. Okay. Um, May the motion to defer uh, made by Councillor Brumfield, seconded by Councillor Duffett. Uh, discussion? Seeing that's the same sort of process, then. I may be in conflict with this one. How does that work? Uh, then what I could do is uh, mute. Uh, we can mute you. Mm -hmm. You can't actually leave your room because we don't know if you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll just mute her, mute her from the conversation. So. How do I mute? One moment. Can you hear me, Deputy Mayor Wallace? There we go. I hit the right <laughs> button. All right. So uh, just the uh, record indicate that uh, Deputy Mayor has uh, has backed out of the uh, Hello, my darling. conflict. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> I'm, she doesn't know that she I'm just, can't I'm, mute it. Yeah. I'm just going to turn the volume down a little bit, Diana. All right. Joys of technology. Okay, so uh, moved by Councillor uh, uh, Broomfield, seconded by uh, Councillor Bennett. Just have the record indicate that the Deputy Mayor has removed herself from the meeting uh, from a conflict perspective, or I guess we've removed her. Uh, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? All right, so one second. No, I will. I'm getting good at this. <coughs> okay, so we brought you back into the meeting and I'm turning your volume up. How's that? Thank good? You. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, next uh, 
recommendation, please. Okay, the final recommendation basically is just updating our uh, bank, uh, bank signing authority where we have a new uh, DFO now. Assign bank, assign bank signing authorities. The FAP committee recommends council revoke all current signing authorities and authorize the following as bank signing authorities. Mayor George Andrews, Deputy Mayor Ella Wallace, Councillor Hayward Broomfield, Director of Financial Operations Mike Dalmont, and Chief Administrative Officer Nadine McCauley. Okay, so um, it's been moved by Councillor Broom Broomfield that we are making a, uh, I guess, an update to our signing authorities to the indicated folks. All those are, sorry, seconded by Councillor Winters. Uh, discussion? All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Thank you. Uh, that's it from your committee, sir. Yep. Thank okay. you. All right. Uh, moving into municipal services, I think is next, isn't it? Sure. Yep. And the Florida Councilor Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Municipal Services <coughs> Committee met Tuesday, April 12th, 12 noon. Present <coughs> Councilor Denise Rumble, Councilor Todd Winters, Mayor George Andrews, CAO, CAO Nadine McCauley, Town Engineer Randy Dillon, Superintendent of Works Keith Pye, Superintendent DJ Elliott, Executive Assistant Kathy Eddy, and myself. The meeting was called to order at 12.02 p.m. We reviewed previous minutes and action items, no errors or omissions. Manager's report, public works. Crews transitioning from winter to spring duties uh, is going well. Uh, application has been submitted to Crown Land to increase the size capacity of the landfill. And the crews are working to keep the landfill road in good condition to accommodate the upcoming increased traffic. Water and sewer manager, wells number one to seven working and the uh, turbidity meters were installed, maintenance and testing ongoing. Repairs planned for Johnny Hill booster station over the next few months that will require some water shut off. Public notices will go out well in advance. Engineering department, an RFP has been submitted to the Department of Transportation for approval to advertise the hydrogeological and service drain each study. The, the draft report for intersection study has been received and reviewed with, with the consultant committee suggested a full presentation be made to council. Um, we had a residential land sweeping policy. Uh, it, it was suggested that the town institute a pilot project. The committee agreed that, that a completely new policy will need to be written and further discussion required before moving forward. Four-way stop sign covering lights committee was in agreement that a four-way stop is, is working well, but would like to see bigger stop signs and consider removing the lights altogether or covering them. Superintendent of, of Public Works to do more research on all options. Removal of stop sign on 10th Street. There was discussion around this topic and speed humps were suggested to replace the signs. This also requires further discussion. Crosswalks on the uptown Tim Hortons location, around the Tim Hortons location uptown. Tim Hortons uptown location has opened their lobby to the public and the owner had concerns about safety due to lack of crosswalks. There uh, there's a meeting suggested with transportation to work to resolve the concerns. The date of next meeting is scheduled for May the 10th at 4.30 p.m. The meeting was adjourned as no further business at 1.30. Uh, I'd like you to please accept this report as presented. Thank Mr. you, uh, Councillor uh, Penner, uh, for the report. So it's moved that we uh, accept the report as presented from Municipal Services for the previous month. Seconded by? Seconded by Councillor Winters. Any discussion? Good None here. To you? Yeah. Oops, sorry, Councillor Rumble. Just on the, I know um, Councillor Bennett mentioned that um, as far as the crosswalk near the new Tim Hortons location goes, that it was um, requiring discussion with transportation. And I guess just because 
I mean, as we all know, that is considered a provincial highway, right? So it's got to be a partnership where um, we work together to come up with a resolution because we've all acknowledged that that's a, a dangerous intersection, but I'm sure that, you know, working together, hopefully, hopefully we'll get a resolution. Well, one of the good things right now is we do have a traffic study too, mm -hmm. where I don't think we uh, did before. So, I mean, in terms of, uh, in terms of that, uh, you know, we, uh, we obviously have to involve those as a, as a partner, but uh, yeah, we hopefully will work to some solution there. Um, okay, any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded? Okay. Do we have one recommendation, Mr. Mayor? Right. You do have a recommendation? Yes, sir. Your floor is yours, sir. Okay, municipal services. MYCW program, Schedule A. <coughs> Amendments be it resolved that we the ultimate recipient the town of Happy Valley Goose Bay accept cost shared funding as per the 2012 2014 2014 2017 and 2017 2020 schedule A's in the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure project approval letters dated April 8 2022 with the total project value of 15 million Yep, 15 million 91 thousand two hundred eight dollars the council agrees to provide the ultimate recipient share value of four million seven hundred sixty thousand three hundred seventy two dollars in funding for these projects and authorizes the mayor and town clerk to enter into funding agreement with the department of transportation and infrastructure on behalf of the town of Hatton valley goose bay thank you okay thank you uh for the recommendation to that we uh enter into our multi-capital uh, multi-year capital works Schedule A, um, moved by Councillor Bennett, seconded by Councillor Rumble. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minus. Thank you, sir, for that. You're welcome. Last but definitely not least, protective services and the floor to Councillor uh, Duff. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, protective services meeting was held on April 13th and started at 1235. Present was myself, Councillor Brumfield, uh, Councillor Winters, Mary Andrew, CEO Nadine McCauley, Director of Protective Services Brad Butler, Constable Baker, EA Kathy Eddy, and we did have a guest, um, Melanie Muzzerall, at the beginning of the meeting um, at 12 p.m. The Municipal Emergency Plan was sent for review and um, as noted in the recommendations, is ready to be adopted. Um, Training for staff and council with the basic emergency management uh, is set for this week. The FPO is busy with fire inspections and fire and life safety inspections. The property and community standards regulations have been sent off for review. There have been concerns over the speed limit on Kellen Drive as it changes numerous times. This is um, going to be discussed further and looked into a little bit more with Constable Baker uh, to determine the best course of action. We discussed a municipal enforcement enhancement in program with our guests, um, and we'd like to thank her for taking the time to be there. There are two recommendations to come forward from Protective Services. Please accept this as my report is being read for the month. All right, thank you, uh, Councilor Duffett. It's uh, moved that we accept the uh, report as uh, presented from Protective Services for the previous month. Seconded by Councilor Bennett. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contra minded. Motion's passed. I see two recommendations, so floor back to you, Councillor Duffett. Thank you. The Protective Services Committee recommends that Council submit an application to Reaching Home Indigenous NL for a funding of a municipal safety program pilot project. Okay, it's uh, moved by Councillor Duffett that uh, we. Uh, Submit an application to Reaching Home Indigenous NL for funding. Uh, seconded by Councillor Winters. Uh, any discussion? I'll say a couple sure, things. Sure, that's on what I was going to say. Yep. Um, so, this application for the Municipal Safety Program pilot project um, is asking for municipal safety officers and an Indigenous liaison officer who will be working under the harm reduction model. Um, there, it has been indicated a need for more harm reduction services and an urgency to provide safe and culturally appropriate services. Um, 
The goal of this is to have an increased level of visibility in the town and advocate on behalf of members of this community. So this application is for training, equipment, and salary for the officers. Okay, that's great. And uh, fingers crossed, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be successful. Uh, Councilor Broomfield. Yeah, I'd just like to add a further comment or clarification. My understanding too is that this pilot project basically is to deal with the homelessness and transient population basically, right? The transiently homeless. Yeah. And more from the harm reduction perspective. Yeah. yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, any, any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion is passed. Next recommendation, please. The Protective Services Committee recommends that Council adopt the Municipal Emergency Management Plan as it has received approval from the Director of Emergency Services. Okay. Uh, move that we accept the Municipal Emergency Management Plan. Um, motion by uh, Councillor Duffett, seconded by Councillor uh, Broomfield. Discussion. And again, I'd just like to, uh, uh, you know, say thanks to uh, Director uh, Butler and his staff in terms of uh, of uh, putting together the report. Uh, we now have it back as uh, I guess signed off by the Minister's Office or FES, I guess. So uh, that's uh, that's good. And I guess we're going to roll out that plan going forward. So, um, any further discussion? All those in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Contrary minded. All right. Uh, nothing else. You're done, Councillor Duffy. Yes. Thank you. Right. Moving to the next item is approval of checks, and uh, Councillor uh, Brumfield. Okay. For the month of April. I'd like to present the checks totaling one million four thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars and fifty-five cents to be approved by council. Okay, uh, it's been moved by Councillor uh, Broomfield that we accept the checks in the noted amount. Uh, seconder, seconded by Councillor Bennett. Uh, all those in, or sorry, any discussion? All right, all those uh, in favor, indicate with aye. 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 Uh, Contrary minded? Okay, we've accepted the, the payment of checks. We approve them. All right, moving into Councillor's form. Hmm. Councillor Duffett's first tonight. Thank you. Um, well, this week is um, National Volunteer Week, so I guess I'd like to give a little shout out and a thank you to a lot of folks in this community who spend their time volunteering at whatever organization it may be. Um, there's a lot of good people in this town doing a lot of good things for no good reason besides they want to. And I really appreciate that. Um, and that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Duffy. Uh, Councillor Rumbold is smiling, so I'm going to her. <laughs> I'm smiling because I've watched you cross things off your list yeah. before as somebody else covers them. And I went I, to cross that one off. And I thought, no, that's, that's valuable enough that I can yeah. say that I echo Councillor Duffett's uh, remarks because volunteer appreciation, we know that there are so many um, things that the cogs in the wheel would just come to a grinding halt if it wasn't for volunteers. And um, we see time and time again people who give selflessly um, of their own time and resources and they all deserve a great big pat on the back because it is so much appreciated. Um, also worth noting, tomorrow is Administrative Professionals Day, and we here at the Town Hall have a lot of great people doing a lot of great stuff. Um, I know they don't like attention. Our Chief Administrative Officer, Nadine, and our Executive Assistant, Kathy, um, you keep us on track, and I know that I am so grateful for the assistance because you got a brand new council. And we know it's been a lot of work for you and keeping us on track has been, um, you know, a big job and I really appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Um, the weather is changing and we've all noticed it. And so I'm seeing in my residential neighborhood a lot more activity with children on bicycles, on scooters, just people are out walking and enjoying the milder temperatures. But I also thought it worth noting to people that, I mean, now there are still some snow banks, there's more kids out, 
really important to take notice of your surroundings, adjust your speed, be extra careful if you can back into your driveway so you can come in and come out front on um, because the little ones are out and I've even seen them in those little battery operated cars going up and down my road and um, it's great to see families out and when I say that people are out, people are also out walking their pets and the snow is melting and I have noticed some not so pleasant um, surprises on the side of the road. So just a reminder to everybody that it is your responsibility as a responsible pet owner to clean up after your pet. Um, I've got a little clip-on thing that goes right on the leash, doesn't weigh anything, and um, so if we could all do our part, then everybody who's out enjoying the weather and taking their walks doesn't have to worry about what they might encounter on the way. So that is it for me. Thank you very much. That's the nicest way I've ever heard that conversation, <laughs> that topic, to be presented. So thank you. Uh, going to Councillor uh, Bennett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, keep it simple. Spring is somewhat in the air. Everybody's habits got to change again for the season, including people's driving habits. Just slow her up a little bit and watch your surroundings, and everything will be all right, and uh, just be kind to people. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dart. Councillor Brumfield, you look like you're... Okay, um, I'd like to start off again, still dealing with the COVID-19. It's still prevalent right across, right around the world, actually. And uh, basically, I went into one of the stores today and noticed they got their sign up. Masks are not mandatory, but it is recommended, which I think this council should be really pushing too as well, right? Even though we're not required to wear masks, it does not hurt. It actually helps a lot, right? The other thing is basically our winter operations are done now. We're back hopefully getting into the summer. So I'd like to thank all of our winter staff who are on the go doing all the snow clearing, our recreation department setting up their arenas and water and sewer staff doing all their stuff they have during the winter time. So the snow freeze ups are a major problem in winter for them. So I'd like to thank that and I want to and off on a note that I haven't heard anyone say yet so far, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there goes another one. <laughs> That's the disadvantage of being last, right? Are you good? Yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor uh, Winters. Uh, just one thing is, uh, from, especially from the committee point of view, is the CSR director is just great to hear that a hometown guy's gotten the job and uh, really can't wait to get to get started with doing the things that the CSR division really should be doing so I'm really excited about that excellent yep for sure uh, okay oh I almost sorry deputy mayor Wallace sorry I'm getting the you point were gonna forget I, I was indeed I sorry <laughs> but I, I got a finger point from uh, from the CAO so oh, the floor is yours <laughs> I'm just uh, wanting to express uh, just absolute joy and appreciation for being part, seriously, of such a community here in Happy Valley Goose Bay. The um, talent, athleticism, tenacity of our youth is second to none, and it was proven just, compar just comparable to the talent pools within cities. We came together to ensure funds were raised for entire teams, ensuring no player was left or even an individual athlete or even a person heading to um, a workshop uh, was not left behind. This month, our town has been represented on countless tournaments, provincial meets, provincial camps, um, and we, the town, are so proud of the youth that have represented with such maturity, talent, and respect. It's the um, it's the little things that make big things possible. So it does take a community, and that exact that is exactly what um, our town has demonstrated as a result of so much love and support. I think that's just a uh, segue leading into this week across Canada. My fellow councillors have mentioned um, is uh, awareness is being shared on the importance and value of volunteers in our community. So April 24th through the 30th, the entire week is National Volunteer Week. The town of Happy Valley Goose Bay is grateful for the hundreds of people in our community taking their time and devoting to um, the community each and every day. So the theme is volunteering is empathy in action. So whether it's on the sports, recreation, or assisting with your community, 
uh, most vulnerable volunteers are making a huge difference in our in Happy Valley Youth Day. So show your gratitude this week to our community volunteers by posting a sincere message on your social media in all posts using the below mm -hmm. the hashtag um, National Volunteers Week 2022 or hashtag Empathy in Action or hashtag Volunteers Bring Heart. So that's exactly what they do. And a huge welcome, Travis Ford. Fabulous news. That's, that's it? it for me. Thank you. Okay. I was wondering a quick question before we go on, just, just a point of interest. Did you watch us on Facebook Live too? No, I couldn't. That's okay, fine. Because <laughs> we don't have that opportunity. Okay. Um, I've got a few items here. Um, first off, I want to congratulate all the teens. And I don't want to start naming them, but, um, you know, all the, uh, the athletes that have gone out of here, um, all the uh, people who are trying out, all the, uh, the folks uh, that, um, you know, are behind them, the parents, uh, all that fundraising. Uh, it's amazing the amount of money that our community, uh, uh, and I always ask, you know, if a co ever captured how much money is fundraised for people to travel in this community. But, um, I mean, we, we saw, uh, you know, we saw the dance group, we saw hockey, judo, uh, soccer, uh, some high school sports stuff, all come away with, uh, with uh, you know, multitude of, of, of medals. And uh, coming up pretty soon, we have a... a a contingent of, uh, of powerlifters going to the Canadian Nationals in St. John's, um, and I expect you know good things from there. Uh, it's just that uh, you you know from a community perspective, it's a great place to uh, it's a great place to be. The segue, of course, I won't reiterate the volunteers issue, but uh, it's all backed uh, the the backbone of that whole uh, process is is volunteers, and we were lucky enough to have some folks in here this evening uh, prior to with the, the check presentations, uh, ground search and rescue, and the uh, and the uh, libraries are just you know a couple of those. Just to bring updates uh, to uh, to council and uh, just generally to everybody, our gas tax rebate, our gas tax audits have been completed, and there's uh, been tremendous work done in terms of getting our uh, our financial audits uh, done. So that uh, has come up in meetings previous to, and I just want to uh, just want to do that. Uh, I had a question today about uh, cleanup crew. And uh, basically, uh, I, was, uh, I was told that if you're interested in the cleanup crew uh, work, that you just should call the town with your social insurance number and uh, provide, uh, provide that information. And uh, I guess depending on the numbers they need and things like that, they'll work down uh, through that list. Uh, another quick one, thank you uh, again to the Hydro Group uh, the other morning. I just had my pot of water on my barbecue for coffee and the power came back on. So thank you to those uh, folks. And uh, I guess they're looking at uh, things in terms of uh, permanently fixing uh, the tripping and, and uh, coordination issues. I also saw that uh, on our website there's an emergency water shut off tomorrow morning. So have a look at that if you're affected. I think it's Grenfell Street. So uh, that one. Uh, lastly, I just want to uh, say, um, um, no, well, just two things. The firefighters, and we have new firefighters here now, so thank you very much. And I also just want to send out a big thank you to an employee who's been around for a long time, uh, and he's retiring. So uh, I'd just like to thank Gary for his years of service to the town, and I, uh, I hope he enjoys uh, his retirement. And with that, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, because I think that's important to say the second time. And administrative boy, that's already been mentioned, so thanks for that. Phew. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else they'd like to bring forward before I close? Randy? Nadine? Uh, no, I'd just like to say, uh, uh, Your Worship, that after a long, cold, hard winter, I think other councillors alluded to it too, that there are more pedestrians outside walking the trails and walking the roads and so on. So I think all drivers and anyone on, on all train vehicles and so on should be cognizant that uh, there are many more walkers out around, many more children out around, uh, that you know, they should be aware that uh, yep. you know, these, these additional people are outside. Absolutely, and I, uh, in speaking with the, uh, the uh, MEO, uh, Constable Baker, and I think the RCMP as well, they've done a bit of a, uh, a crackdown on speeds on Kellen Drive and have issued a large number of tickets. So if you're out and around, uh, heed, uh, heed that advice, or unfortunately you'll end up paying the, paying the price. So uh, the other thing is if you're an avid skidooer, please be safe out there. We don't want our ground search and rescue team to be engaged in, in uh, something that uh, may turn into a tragedy. So. Anything else? Anybody else? No? All right. 
I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Moved by Councillor Duffy. And I only get to knock this once. <laughs> Meeting's adjourned.